Diana Hawkins, thank you so much for coming and joining me on the Merry Just Meets podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm just glad to be sitting across from you. Have you I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm so happy that you can come and join me and I'm so happy that we've managed to find a time that works for us both because obviously I'm in the UK and you're in New Zealand. Yes, I'm, I'm snuggled up. Well, you, I think you've got your morning cup of tea and I've got my like evening peppermint tea and and blanky. Oh, that's <laughs> different amazing. Different seasons, different times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think we've already discussed there might be a slight delay um, for us chatting on the call, but seeing as the signal is going all the way around the world, the other side of the world, <laughs> hopefully we can forgive technology for the odd hiccup. Yes. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Cool. That's well, have good. you had a good day? What have you been up to today? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard me there we've had a hiccup already I said <laughs> no. how have you been today what have you been getting up to today because you've already had your today whereas I'm starting mine now all right yeah it was, no it's good I am um, my well I'm a, a mum of a two and a half year old so uh, most of my day was spent you know, running around after him. Um, he goes to a little home care in the morning. So I had about a three hour window that I go to like, a, you know, a little cafe and have a coffee and um, do all my emails. And at the moment, I'm basically doing all the work planning for the album and, and things like that. So yeah, and then had dinner and now I'm sitting here. He's, he's asleep. And, and I'm, again, it's me time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very tea. much for sharing your me time with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I've got to go back to um, when you said about doing the emails and getting ready for your album. Please tell us more about that. Yeah, so I'm just basically, I was in the studio just this week, um, last week and I'm finishing off my final vocals. So I'm kind of starting to, you know, you've got like a long lead time, right? Before you can actually launch the thing and lots of um, boxes to tick. So yeah, just doing all the last minute things to um, get that album finished and then getting the graphic design and the photos and music videos. And yeah, so it's, it's been a long time coming. So I'm really excited to finally get some new music out there for everyone. That is yeah. so exciting. Yeah. It's always, um, I always find the end of recording a really strange period of time because yeah. I just, I love feeling that relief of great, I've done it, but also kind of a sadness of, oh, it's over now. And I don't like all the recordings done. And that's like <laughs> my favorite part. Do you know what I mean? You kind of have that mix of emotions. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that how you're yeah. feeling with it? <laughs> True. <laughs> I feel like, well, this album, the concept for it started like three years ago. <laughs> so for me, I'm like, it's the finish line. Because <laughs> um, I've sort of had this. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Um, just want to share this music with people and yeah, of course. Let it be. Let it be out in the, out in the world. So. Yeah. Are you able to tell us more about the type of music and your vision for it and what you've been up to like over the past three years while it's been leading up to this point? Yeah, sure. Um, goodness, that's a lot of ground to cover. Um, so the album itself is kind of me going back to my roots. So um, I grew up with a lot of folk music around the house. I have grandparents um, from Ireland so um, there's a lot of folk influences. And I also started out in country and western music. No way! So, um, yeah. Yeah, yes way. <laughs> I grew up on a farm, so it's got to gotta make sense that there's some country music. <laughs> in That's there. so cool! <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's probably, it's my most original album to date. So it's got like eight original songs on there. Um, they're very folky in nature but still they've got those undercurrents of the classical and um, which is really nice. And yeah, I started the album in Poland and I'm finishing it in New Zealand with some 
you know producers and musicians here so that's amazing so what took you out basically to... the album that i've thought of oh no <laughs> you carry on no you carry on i'm about to ask you another question because I'm, I'm like finding so many questions to ask oh, you i'm I, so I was intrigued just already say, the album that i've always thought of it's an album album for the dreamers <laughs> It's an album I've created for the dreamers. So for people who dream. <laughs> okay, well, I think yeah. that encompasses the whole world and I can't wait to listen <laughs> to it. Um, but I've, I've got so many questions to ask you. I really want to ask you more about your songwriting and the original content. But first of all, you said about recording it in Poland to begin with. Yes, yeah. So um, I've done basically all my full length albums in Poland up until this point. So my debut album, Journey On, um, was recorded in Poland. And that wow. came about uh, partly, your, partly your responsible, actually, because <laughs> I met this Polish guy <laughs> um, here in New Zealand. I was working on a friend's album. And sitting down over coffee, I was telling him, you know, I've got these songs and I want to make this album. And I was sharing with him, I'd written down like a few producers and one of those names was Ross Cullen. Might but familiar to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I was, <laughs> I was telling him how I really loved, you know, his work um, with Enya and Clannard. And then I brought up Mary Jess and your album because by the way, I found that album just to be delightfully refreshing and just, the song choices and the instrumentation and I was just really wowed by the album so I'm That's telling so you how I really Thank like you. this album and blah 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 <laughs> yeah and then Pavo says um Pavo says to me he's like oh I worked on that album with Ross <laughs> um I was you know I was doing the programming and I'm like what <laughs> sorry what <laughs> so yeah I'm like, who am I sitting across from? And, and next minute we were talking about recording an album together in Poland and, and, you know, getting string orchestra and all these musicians and like this major kind of production in Poland and uh, finishing off the album with Ross and Sandy in London. So kind of doing it um, in both places. And I kind of, I said yes. I think I took a night to think about it. <laughs> and the, um, the crazy New Zealander in me said, why not? And three months later, I found myself in Poland. Um, That's absolutely an album. incredible. I love this because I feel like we should fill people in because obviously we know who all these people are. Yes. Um, but yeah, Ross yeah. Cullum is an incredible <laughs> producer that um, Decca hired to work on my debut album, Shine. And he also produced Enya and Clannad, as you said. Um, and Sandy is also an amazing producer. He's got such a brilliant musical mind. He can hear things that I would never have, have thought of. And it's when you get such great people like that together um, that you end up creating something that you can all really be proud of because it's all, it's like when you're in a songwriting collaboration and people are coming in with ideas and the song ends up being this whole other thing that you could never have imagined by yourself. It's, it's that kind of thing. Um, so to have such amazing people work on Shine was absolutely amazing. And I can't believe that you... <laughs> it's amazing where you meet people, isn't it? Because Pavel, oh my gosh, he's amazing. And it's so great that you got I to go know. to Poland to work with him. And yeah. Yeah. He, oh my gosh, his programming blew me away. Did, did, you, did you get to spend some a bit of time with him um Pavo yeah I did Obviously, yeah like in person yeah okay yeah okay yeah because yeah, I thought he came over um awesome yeah he's yeah, so did, like um, kind of eccentric and geni genius like to me yeah <laughs> like I was those trying to creative think the, genius types <laughs> there was one song in particular that he was working on that um Oh, it was um, my Chinese cover, Yue Gong Airen, which is the Moonlight Lovers, the theme from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. He was working on that song, I remember. Yeah. Um, and I was going in to do a guide vocal. Um, and he'd created this incredible sound world for it that just, it really embodied the um, Asian ele elements of the song, um, but also came across with the, um, the gorgeous Western influences and the things that we were trying to go for to 
show that um, I had these two sides to my story. Um, and I thought that the sound world he created was incredible for that. Um, I think what I might have to do, I'm afraid, I'm really sorry, is just pause the podcast because I can hear some funny buzzing in my ears whenever I talk. And I just want to check that it's not going onto the recording. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do is just, um, I'm going to pause the recording and yeah, and we're diving straight back in. So I think what's going on is uh, that my internet is not particularly brilliant right now. <laughs> and so, um, we stopped the po podcast because I was starting to sound like a robot. Um, but I think maybe it's just the signal trying to call the other side of the world is not working in our favor at the moment, but we're going to, we're going to stick with it, aren't we, Anna? We're going to try and just wait for each other to respond and hopefully we yes. don't sound like robots right. too much. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we go straight back into working in Poland and um, I'd love to hear more about that and more about that experience because we were chatting about uh, the amazing sound world that can be created by lots of people coming together. So please do tell us more yes. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, being in Poland was amazing, um, pretty daunting as well, like you kind of come into a new country and you don't know the language um, and basically I, I lived in Pavo's home, he had like a home and a studio, so the whole experience was really hands-on, um, just kind of like doing life and then next minute we'd be creating and it would be like all go and then you're like twiddling your thumbs, you know? Um, so all the pre-production side, you know, I was doing alongside the person, like in the same country. It, it wasn't back and forward emails, which was, I really enjoyed that aspect because I felt like I learned so much. Um, and then, you know, after you've laid all the groundwork, when we got the, the string orchestra in, and a harpist and percussionist and it was in this yeah this huge kind of auditorium it was it was really amazing and I was actually just recently looking back over like all the footage and photos and I was just like oh my goodness like that happened and that was wild like that was really wild getting to do that so um, yeah, yeah. I, the <laughs> it was thing definitely that really, a lot of pinch pinch me moments yeah I know exactly what you're saying the thing that did that for me was recording the strings I had a real pinch me moment then that these amazing instrumentalists were playing stuff that I had written and bringing it to life and real strings I I think at the time because when I was recording my first album I was I think 20 years old and I didn't quite realize the difference that a whole real string section would make to a song, but it completely brought it to life in a way that I could never have even dreamed. And um, that was a real pinch me moment. Like, wow, I can't believe how amazing this sounds. <laughs> Following your journey, it sounds like you've had a lot of pinch me moments. <laughs> Well, I can say the same about Pretty you. Amazing. Absolutely. Because I've, I've, there's so many things. I've been so excited about getting you on here, not only because we've worked with very similar people and the same people, but mm. um, because you've got so many great things to talk about. Um, so, for example, is Rayo recording a video out there? Like, that's an amazing place to go and to even think of going. And then the fact that this video is doing so incredibly well, that's amazing. So please do tell us more about that. Yeah, so, uh, well, Pavo is part Jewish, so he also has um, a studio in Israel. And when I was recording Divine, which is basically an album of inspirational, uplifting songs, <laughs> and we decided to record a song in Hebrew, so which is Avinu Malkenu. And we recorded with the string orchestra and we had this Israeli violinist, which sounds like something from Schindler's List. And um, so we decided to go to Israel <laughs> and, you know, work with this violinist and record the vocals there so that I made sure that I got the Hebrew correct. And then when we were there, we were doing some other recording. Um, there was like a mandolin player and things like that. 
and we were doing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which was a bonus track. And we had this idea, oh, how about if I sang a little bit in Hebrew? And so next minute we're like translating the verse into Hebrew. And from that, um, I decided to also record a music video there. And that was just, wow. Like I wish I could go back in time and just relive that experience again and again, because the place is just, it's just an incredible, there's just no other place that I've been that's like that. And we were recording in the desert. So it was uh, sunset and you're just like looking out just over these hills and we're climbing up, you know, these kind of rocky desert mountains and the videographer's like, oh, just make sure you stamp your feet um, just to ward off snakes. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like I'm New Zealander, right? So <laughs> and, yeah, just things like that have stuck in my mind and waking up before dawn um, to you know, film around Jerusalem. So that recording that video was really something special and it's been amazing just the people's response from, from it. And yeah, and the fact that it's had so many views and slowly nearly, was it nearly a climbing, million views which is now it's really had. awesome. Yeah, it's nearly a million views <laughs> and it's it's so wild when you when you see that and people from all over the world and connecting with that song and and you're like, oh, here I am in New Zealand. And where are you from? <laughs> That's really incredible. Cool. And I can't imagine that feeling of being in Jerusalem and in the desert. And I just, it must have felt so mm. magical. I can't imagine that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So talking it really about it being was. a pinch was, me moment. Absolutely. It was surreal and just, um, I, it really does feel like the Holy Land. Like it felt like you were having these holy moments um as you were as you were filming it it, it really did and, and hopefully the video has captured that uh, what i'll have to do is i'll have to put a link to the <laughs> video in the description below so that everybody can see it we can get it all the way up to a million because it's, it's <laughs> nearly there now isn't it nearly nearly there yeah yeah go go yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is so cool. So <laughs> absolutely. I, I really wanted to ask you earlier about your songwriting because I think there there are really only a handful of classical crossover people who are writing their own songs. And I had a good conversation with Uriel about the importance of original material. Um and we were chatting about original material versus covers, that kind of idea. Um so I'd love to know more about your songwriting and how you feel it works with you as an artist, as well as the idea of um, new music helping your career, as well as doing covers too. So yeah, I'd love to know more about all of that. I don't quite know when to start, but like, can you talk about when you first started songwriting <laughs> yeah. and what made you really want to do that? Yes, um, sure. For, for me, it started later. Uh, so... I think because I was already singing and I was doing the classical crossover and singing with orchestras, I I think I'd sort of almost put myself in a box and just was like, okay, I'm a singer. And so it wasn't really until my late teens uh, in my, my early twenties that I really started writing music and then putting that music out there. Um, I remember writing a few songs when I was quite young um, and a key sort of an influential person in my life who I won't name sort of had said to me um, early on that I would like that I was a singer, that I would never be a songwriter because I, you know, I didn't play piano and I wasn't this sort of, you know, I was a singer. That's what I was doing. And, um, and I think I somebody kind of else that on board like, and I was sort of. But how how <laughs> dare know, somebody else funny. feel I, like they can define you like that? You go, but it's my life. Thank you. <laughs> I know but you know I was like 13 you know 14 so I just I I trusted I trusted their voice in my world at the time and I was just like oh yeah I'm just singing songs and I just kept singing songs and it wasn't again it wasn't until I was later that it was like oh actually I have these songs here and I have this voice and I have something maybe I want to share and so oh. Though, but somebody um, you've that like, kind of came later, and then it started informing my other music choices. 
13 <laughs> years old like you yeah. the world is your oyster at that point you could go on to be an astronaut if you wanted at 13 like how can they say oh you're just a singer you'll never be a songwriter <laughs> like what <laughs> i don't get it uh, well sometimes people say things without really thinking them through don't they it's like yeah yeah but it's funny those things that you you take on board and when you shouldn't and and you you know it creates limitations for you which I am not a fan of <laughs> yes at all so mm -hmm. yeah I started yeah don't let anyone create limitations for you everyone exactly <laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> so redefine your life for yourself so yeah, so I started writing later on and Journey On was, um, you know, the first album that I had original material out in the world. Um, and I've since, like, I've, re I've performed Journey On with a few different orchestras. So that's really amazing um, and felt like a huge accomplishment, even though obviously you record the song and that's really great, but just... I still remember actually performing them live with a full orchestra and just like, wow, this is, this is my song, <laughs> you know? And, and Pavo is a huge part of that as well. I really got to give him credit because he gave me a chance. And, um, and I think working so hands-on like we did, we were able to, you know, create those songs together and and you know i brought the melody and the lyric and ideas for instrumentation and then you know he works his magic and programs up this masterpiece and you're just yeah kind of going yes and like oh singing these little parts can i have the strings doing la 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 you know <laughs> and he's like yes you can <laughs> so that was really really fun just having someone that can kind of you know bring all the things in your head to life um, so, yeah, yeah. I, this is so funny. I do the same thing when I'm songwriting because I don't play an instrument. I always have to make lots of funny noises to try and get my ideas across. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, can we have a guitar going? Oh, there's bow, another na, na, one. Now, 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 now. You do know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And hand gestures. Like a lot of, I feel like I get quite Italian. These, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sounds like we'd have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah, no, I do as well. Whenever I'm quite excited, I get quite animated. Yeah, yeah. Same that was thing. something I loved about your, your album is that you had you had original materials. So, yeah, it's, yeah. As it, you know, there's as I said, that's you kind of look across the board spectrum of of artists, and and there's there's yeah, there's a handful of people that are that are stepping yeah. out and and sharing that vulnerable part of themselves <laughs> and it's, it's scary daunting. too yeah, isn't it when to you're talking about it being a, yeah when you're talking about it being a vulnerable part of yourself it is because it's something that has mm. come from your heart um and your mind and your feelings and you've tried to put that out into the world it's it's really oh what was the lyric there's a lyric in an adele song that really sums it up um it throw my soul through every open door i think it's something like that i'm gonna have to look it up and put it in the description yeah. below so that i know exactly what it is but it's about how you open yourself up um in a songwriting session and then other people kind of profit from it if you know what i mean um at least that's what that lyric means to me um but it very much talks about how you're bearing your soul in a songwriting session um and that is what it is so then to be able to put that song out it's a very brave thing because you're saying this is really from me it means a lot and it's a very personal thing and then people can just strike it down as they often do on the internet nowadays unfortunately that's their prerogative free speech they can do that yeah. but um you know it hurts like <laughs> it's <Yeah>. not <laughs> so it is a brave thing yeah and i think people get used to they want yeah they want, want to hear what they want to hear and and what they know often what is familiar so um it's it's really nice when you get those the fans and those people that are also interested and and um, will come on the journey with you <laughs> yeah. to be introduced to something new and yeah. something that's your own and yeah so. yeah that's true <laughs> I mean I, I 
I do think that covers are a great thing to put out there because they help people discover you. So when I've been trying to grow my YouTube channel recently, I've been putting a lot of covers on there. Um, Didn't you say that you're looking at growing your YouTube as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, I just, I love story and I feel like having song and visual elements and telling a story and I love you know, the videos that I've been a part of being able to put together. So I'm wanting to continue to grow that platform and engage people. And with this new album, I am, I've got kind of all these music videos lined up to share with people. So the first one, it's, it's, it is an original song. Um, It's called I Am, and it was filmed at Bethel's Beach in Auckland. And it was all moody and mystical and very cool. It was, (laughs) <laughs> it ended up raining so we actually shot shot a completely different video than than we were initially planning on shooting but it came out really nice so yeah I admire so, yeah, your adaptability kind of there and see how that goes I do I admire your adaptability there because when you're dealing outside you just you've got to go with what the weather throws at you haven't you and I, <laughs> I think that um New Zealand is like England on the other side of the earth you know we don't have any of the scary animals but we do have very changeable weather <laughs> <laughs> that you've got to contend with so it's not like when you're in Israel trying to stamp yes. out the sand to get the snakes away <laughs> no <laughs> and you're in like the yeah the blistering heat you don't get that here <laughs> no no yeah. thankfully although we have had a heat wave um in England past few days it's been like upwards of 30 degrees which is not normal for, for like, us for like a, a two-week heat wave or <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a two-day heat wave. Oh. No, it was a bit longer than that. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because I've I've stayed in in London, you know, a few times, and over the summer, and suddenly it will be like hot, like really hot, like thirty degrees for, and it will last for like a week, and you're like, and that was the summer. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> the really that was it. Hot, That's hot all you get in. You're not getting any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> But every, you know, but you'd still be like, oh, it's so hot, you know. <laughs> and then it was over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've got to enjoy these things while they last, even though the, you are tempted to moan about it a bit. But I think that's what's happening now. I'm wondering if that's why our signal isn't working so great is because we've had that heat wave. And then, of course, the storm comes in and I feel like it's kind of like it's very windy outside right now. So uh, that's not right. going to be helping us with the signal. <laughs> we've... Right. We've actually also had, it's not stormy outside right now, but two days ago we've had like, like little mini tornadoes like around where we live and like tornadoes. thunder and lightning and yeah. And storms and it is the middle of our winter. Yeah, I know many tornadoes. So anyway, oh, <laughs> the yeah. weather is playing it's tricks winter on for us. you. Oh, <laughs> what, what's it like winter time yeah. over there? Yeah. To be fair, it's pretty mild. Um, I, I learned that when I was in Poland pretty quick. <laughs> like, our, our winters are pretty mild, but it's like, you know, 13 degrees during the day. <laughs> but we're all like, oh, it's so cold, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we don't quite have insulation like they do in Poland, though. Like, we don't know. It's like we're all walking around really tough. Yeah. <laughs> I got some amazing pictures from other countries when I did my uh, video for I fell in love with a snowman and I asked fans to send in pictures of their snow memories so that we can put them together because the song was based on a snow memory that Rich and I had of when we built an igloo. Um, So uh, I got some amazing pictures sent in from all over the world and I remember one in particular was sent in from my friend in Switzerland oh my goodness gracious me, snow and ice oh. in massive like columns. <laughs> it was crazy, absolutely crazy. Wow. So yeah, it sounds like that kind of thing. I'm going to have to put a link to that video <laughs> below as well, now, well, so, uh, ooh, as well now so that people can yes. see it. But she's like pushing a car. You can look out for it because she's the one pushing the car that looks like it's going to stay there forever now because it's just frozen in a block of ice. It's a bit like... Um, when you see wow. in children's films and movies where somebody's got an ice gun and they shoot somebody with it and you get all of the yeah. sort of shards coming off 
uh, like they've been hit here yes, so it's like I'm a comet to go watch the video now too. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. like somebody's hit the car with an ice gun and it's gone <laughs> it's like it's a very cool picture wow. so yeah i'll have to put that below um so that you can see but yeah there's oh, um <laughs> Moving on to more current times, um, I know that obviously coronavirus <laughs> has affected everything, um, but you said just before we started the call about um, songbirds, which was something that you've put together, which now looks like it might not go ahead because of all this stupid virus stuff. But um, are you hoping to still carry on with that in the future? Yeah. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, so it was a, basically a show concept that I put together um, paying homage to the female sort of folk singer songwriters of the 60s and 70s so you know Joni Mitchell and I love Joan Baez and yeah just all these amazing you know is Dolly Parton things like that um, so I put together this the show with like we had a, a band a guitar mandolin fiddle player double bass um, and we've done a couple of shows so and actually some of the footage from those shows is up on youtube and i'd planned to do a tour um like you know in a couple of months time but that sort of <laughs> that sort of just kind of all went on on pause but i'm hoping that i'll get to do the show again um i'm just i've been really inspired by that music and the sentiments of the time as well and just just that i don't know i just find that era of music really amazing the songwriting um, incredible and obviously those females very inspiring so I kind of just it's 60 years on 2020 so I put together the show and yeah I've been really enjoying exploring and performing that material for a change it feels a little bit like going back to you know what I did when I, I was younger starting out in the country and yeah and it's also a nice little lead-in into my new album which is a little which is folk um, a lot more folk based and yeah so yeah that's been exciting but I love that mm. about our genre of classical <laughs> crossover because you're able to take inspiration and that influence from so many other places and draw it into classical crossover I think that's why I love it so much because it allows for a great amount of versatility and it sounds like you're really displaying that in yes. your songbird show yeah yeah, it's, and I think it being a concept show, um, it works because it allows me the freedom to kind of go there and explore all that music and perform a show of songs that, you know, people that enjoy that era of music enjoy. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice. And that's, that's right. That's the beauty of classical crossover. And it's, I think, while I found myself within that genre of music because I just, I love so many styles and it's the song i feel like that moves me over and above the the genre yes yeah. it's, it's the yeah. you know the song the story if it moves me if i can connect with that then i want to perform it <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. i completely agree with you there i really do and um i completely know what you're saying about it being the song yeah. that really really gets to you and then I think that's because um, I've covered quite a few different songs now and it's not about the genre that it is. A good song is a good song, can be sung in so many different ways and it's still a good song. So I completely know what yes. you're saying there. Yeah, are there any um, favorites that yeah. you've got in there from Joni Mitchell or Dolly? Um, well, I mean, Both Sides Now is yeah. a beautiful one, I've, but I've also enjoyed singing like Big Yellow Taxi. <laughs> which Amazing! It's just a lot of fun. I really, yeah, <laughs> I really love singing. Um, do you know Diamonds and Rust by Joan Baez at all? Um, I'm not sure. I she feel was like, like I should. She was. But a, I don't. <laughs> yeah, she she wrote it about Bob Dylan. So um, go go check that one out. She yeah. was like um, before Bob Dylan was like a major hit. He he was coming with her on tours, and they were like an item. So. Um, Anyway, that was a really nice one to to write. I'm um, sorry, to write a single. <laughs> it is nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> and I did wake up at 5.30. Anyway. That's early. Um, so, yeah. Um, Blue Bayou. Blue Bayou was really nice um, just to sing. It's just yeah. people seem to really enjoy that one. And 
Those Were the Days by Mary Hopkins. Yeah. Is it just <laughs> Those so great that you're... Were the days, my friend. You know that one? Oh, I'll keep going. I just... <laughs> you will want to hear it. <laughs> Honestly, I love your voice. I could listen to you sing all day long. I really do. And I love the versatility in your voice as well. It just seems like it can lend itself to anything. Oh, that's, that's really lovely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I did love um, your performance in the latest classical crossover concert as well. I really loved the song that you sang for that. And I thought your performance was really beautiful. It's, um, it's nice you. to have something like that that you can do during lockdown, isn't it? It's been really good. You know, yeah. Been, How did you keep yourself occupied when you were um, sort of locked down and everything was kicking off? Were there things that you really wanted to focus on and then you had the time to start looking at? or? I wish I... I... <laughs> I would love to be able to say that. Um, I mean, it just I, with a two and a half year old, it just my my husband was still working, but he was working from home. So um, yeah, I was just kind of occupied entertaining him most of the time. We did go and stay with family, so that was really nice because he he got a lot of you know quality time with with grandparents, and that was out in the country, which was like such a huge blessing because. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I would have found it a real struggle being, being at home, um, which I know a lot of people are, 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 are in that place. But yeah, it was a blessing to go back to, to the farm and, and be with family. But I was booked in to like finish the album and I had all these gigs and, and you know, and then everything was, yeah, everything was kind of put on pause. Um, as is everyone's story everyone has their own story so yeah it just yeah. ended up becoming about you know, quality quality family time and and I think like everyone you know I went through all these ups and downs and emotional you know emotions and um yeah it's yeah. a strange very very strange time very strange, strange time, old time. It still is yeah yeah I completely yeah. agree with you so seeing as you were delayed with recording um, during lockdown and all this corona rubbish that's going on, do you have any idea as to when the album might be out, <laughs> when we can expect to see all this beautiful content that you're going to be putting on your YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, so, well, my goal is three to four months, so that's the timeline that I'm working to. I don't have a date set, but as soon as I do, I will, I will let everyone know, and um, I'll be putting up a pre-order for the album um, as, as soon as I can. So hopefully in the next couple of months, there'll be a pre-order available for people and, you know, perks and, and things like that involved. And I'll have my first music video coming up probably in a month's time. That's so, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. And such a great idea to do a pre-order as well. I think they are such a great tool that artists can use now um, because they enable you to yes. like I'm planning a pre-order at the moment um, and it enables you to offer things that you wouldn't be able to offer normally um, so say like before when you just made an album yeah. and then the album came out and people bought the album with a pre-order I'm looking at putting mm. together really special bundles for it that people wouldn't get normally and so I think it really gives a great opportunity for artists mm. to connect more with their fan base um, and really create things that they're going to love so have you thought about other projects that you're offering yeah. in terms of the pre-order and that kind of thing yeah so i'm well i'm kind of just right in the process of of talking to you know manufacturers and and <laughs> printing companies and things like that so um i'd like to like for example i i've never done vinyl before but I'm considering making that available as, as a pre-order. So um, like I would do a run of vinyl if so many people, you know, bought the vinyl. <laughs> and so that'll be really cool. I would love, I would, I would secretly love to have an album on vinyl. <laughs> I don't know why that just sounds really cool. It does sound <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and I think particularly for this album being that it's, you know, got, so much original content content on it so it's got about eight songs that are my own um and it's got that, a little bit of that folk influence coming through it just feels like a vinyl album would really suit the whole project um yeah, so, yeah. but i know what you're saying like and if a certain amount of I'm, people I've got want it because it's it's expensive to make vinyl yeah. isn't it it's an expensive product yes 
yeah and you've got like a minimum run you know so you have to say print off 100 or 150 so you sort of want to know that there's interest in having a vinyl um so that's a doing things like a pre-order is a good a good way to find out whether people are interested in that kind of item and yeah i'm gonna have some a graphic designer that's doing some beautiful illustrations so i hope to incorporate those into some merch um in different ways than i have done before so that'll be that'll be nice wow i can't wait to see them that sounds really lovely i love it when you get to use different art forms together like that yeah me too uh, yeah because it will really bring the ideas to life um a bit more won't it it's like um like a music video really where you get to see the artist's ideas um in a different form and that's really lovely it enables a, a deeper connection sometimes i feel so yeah i can't wait to see yeah. those are you thinking the il illustrations yeah. are going to be used yeah maybe for the album artwork as well or would that be a separate line yes yeah so um yeah definitely for the album artwork and within kind of like a lyric poster as well oh, cool. and um I'm, I'll, yeah and on some t-shirts so um yeah just incorporating some of the lyrics from my album and some of the themes i've been really inspired by nature and obviously just the the theme of of being a dreamer you know dreaming of a brighter sun <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> that sounds really lovely uh, because I'm, um, I'm looking forward to sharing these songs with people and and hopefully people okay people connect yeah absolutely I just it's fun coming up with stuff like that as well because you've had your creative time creating the album and recording it but then the creativity doesn't stop there you're mm -hmm. able to be creative with the new products that you can offer that go along with it and also you're able to be creative in your ways yeah. of marketing it and your ideas of getting it out there to the world so i think a lot of artists before yeah. they've thought oh well that's the creative process over but it's not you've still got so many no. other ways to use your creativity yeah. to come up with all these different ideas and um, although it's a lot of yes. work, it can be quite fun, can't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, is a, there is a surprising amount of things to do <laughs> to get an album out there, which you will know all about. Like there's, there really is a lot involved, um, you know, and costs and, and risks and, you know, like being a self-employed independent artist is, yeah. <laughs> I'm only doing this because of, you know, I've, because of the passion. And I, I think that, that you're the same, you know, just because, well, one, I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, but also I've just still got this, you know, this belief that this is what I want to do with my life and um, to, in a way, serve others and bless others with music and that small way that I can. And, and yeah, that's what kind of keeps driving me me on <laughs> to yeah. keep creating <laughs> yeah 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 I think you've got to have that feeling of that passion and that feeling of greater purpose in order to do it because it's not mm -hmm. let's face it making an album financially is not always a sensible business decision it's not because they're so expensive <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah I know. if another business were to uh. look at it they'd be going well People listen to music for free yeah. <laughs> and you're going to spend thousands of pounds recording it mm -hmm. just to give it away. How does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what Absolutely. Because I, mean? <laughs> I was talking to, who was I talking yeah. to the other day? I was talking to a good friend of mine um, and I said, I said how much it costs for me to record my last two albums. So Inspire... Um, that was a five track wow. album with the with the young people that I really wanted the world to hear. That was six thousand pounds that that cost to make just the album. It doesn't not anything else, yeah. not like making the physical copies, not actually having them pressed and made into CD. Uh -huh. Just just the album. Employing a graphic designer and a yeah yeah, and then yeah. Um, prayer to a snowflake was over ten thousand pounds. It cost to make that. And so when you say that to people, yeah. they're like, music costs how much now? <laughs> what? Yeah, I know, they don't... I know. <laughs> and so like when you say that to somebody and then you say when people get to listen to it for free, if you were saying that to a businessman, they'd be like, 
how does that make any logical sense what you're doing <laughs> so yeah, i think you have to have that and i think that's why I like there's things like um yeah sorry you carry on <laughs> well i was just saying that's why that you have to have that passion that purpose yeah you have to have that passion and that yeah. feeling of purpose yeah. and that feeling of that's what you were put on this earth to do because it's a huge financial investment. Mm. It's, um, I mean, and prayers for a snowflake as well. Mm. I really wanted to make that very minimalistic because I wanted the voice to be heard as its own instrument. Mm. I didn't want it to be swamped in lots of other stuff. As soon as you right. add string players and other things to that, yeah. it's, it's how long is a piece of string? Yes. Like the, it can skyrocket the amount you're spending <laughs> yeah. on an album. And, um, yeah. it, uh, it doesn't make logical business sense to do it unless you're doing an all-encompassing thing because now music is a promotional tool it's what you use mm. to then get yourself out there because as soon as you've got a new music new album and then you can tour with it that's then newsworthy you can get yourself into yeah. newspapers and stuff and you make your money back in other ways um but it also means that you've got to be very savvy. Mm. You've got to be a real savvy business person and you've got to have your fingers in all these different pies to try and get that money back somehow from that massive financial hard. investment that you've made. It's really hard. And so like without that feeling of purpose and <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Without that passion and purpose, why would we be, why would we be putting ourselves through all of this? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we would have, I would have given up long ago. Yeah. <laughs> long ago. <laughs> In fact, there's definitely many times I've considered it. Um, and, you know, and uh, so, in, my, in my next album, I suppose it explores some of those themes because it's about, you know, just continuing to be a dreamer and continuing to explore, continuing to play, play continuing to create and, um, you know, Bold, Brave and Beautiful was my previous album, which had similar themes. So yeah, I encourage myself, you know, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep creating and, um, <laughs> and yeah. And again, driven by that, that purpose, um, something that I felt very early on as a child, you know, just feeling like, okay, this is, this is, this is a gift I have. And I want to, you know, you've got a gift, you give it away. So um, but sometimes it can cost a lot to give it away, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, hundred percent. Never know, Mary Jane. Maybe, maybe it's it's a, it's about to come 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 back a little bit <laughs> for us. I hope <laughs> and, so. And I've if been... not, we'll just keep soldiering on. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure we will. But I've been thinking about that recently with my YouTube channel. So going back to I mean, about... in the financial realm. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we can always even hope can't we <laughs> um, yes. but yeah going back to youtube and talking about growing the channel there it's um it's a great thing to want to do because it's another way in which you can um really put yourself out there to try and find new fans and new people who enjoy your music um but when uh so i recorded quite a few different covers before lockdown um, came in so that thankfully, so I've still got things I can be putting out even though I can't get together with any musicians right now. Um, yeah. But they cost a lot of money to put together because you've got to hire the musicians. You've then got to try and get the sound right so that it sounds balanced on YouTube and you've got to then got to pay mixes and mixers and masters and that kind of thing. And then you're putting it out on YouTube for free. And so it's again, somebody yeah. going, a bit like if you say that to a business person, why are you doing that? <laughs> um, but it's because then you're hoping that you'll inquire, that, um, you'll acquire new fans that would then hopefully buy uh, the CDs that you've made and other merchandise and support you in a different way. Um, um, but yeah. I've been thinking recently about how I might be able to have that work for me a bit more because now I can't perform live. All my work is cancelled. I'm not going out and performing on cruise ships and earning money there. Um, so I'm trying to think of ways in which I might be able to still create things. Um, because before I'd use my live money um, in order to create these things. Um, and so there's a lot of artists now that are moving on to really sort of new ideas and new age platforms. Um, so I know that Patreon has been around for a little while. Uh, where there's subscription-based services. But I'm looking into that. Yeah. yeah, I've started looking into that as well. And then um, virtual tip jars as well. Like I was, I was chatting to Daisy Shoot about this oh, wow. because That's she cool. does a virtual tip jar. Yeah. Um, 
and she's part American. So like, I can see how that works. You know, like Americans, they get the idea of a tip jar. Um, and it also means that you can put on a concert that everybody can come to, no matter how they've been affected financially by all of this, which is great. It's really all encompassing. Um, but then as an English person, I feel really weird about the idea of a virtual tip jar. It just like doesn't quite sit right with me. <laughs> Um, so I've been thinking about all these different new ideas that might be possible. And it's interesting to hear you say you've yeah. been thinking about Patreon as well. Yeah, well, I mean, because obviously I have that desire there to create some more music videos. And as you know, they, they cost money to create. So um, I like the fact that with Patreon, you can pay per, like instead of a subscription, like a monthly, which you can do as well, or you can pay per video. So it's kind of, I like the fact that you're getting an exchange and now I realize that the videos do go, um, you know, up on YouTube for free for everyone else, but just, you know, that they can be actually a part of the, of, you know, the behind the scenes, they can get, you know, you can, you know, special downloads, like I've got unreleased tracks that I could share with people. I mean, all that footage of like Journey On and all my albums, there's so much stuff there that I haven't really, I haven't told that story or, or shared all of that with people. So um, I feel like I've got a lot of content that I could share that would just be for, you know, a special group of people. Um, and so, yeah, I've been, I've been considering it. I, again, it's that it feels really strange to ask, ask, I don't know, ask money from people. Um, but again, it is nice that it's per video. So it's only when you actually create, and release something that they would then be you know contributing three dollars or five dollars or whatever whatever tier that they were part of and then it also allows you to kind of engage with them in a different way so you can have you know your um say quarterly q a and things like that which i think that's quite that would be quite nice just yeah it's almost like creating this little family <laughs> you know this little community of people that you, that you can kind of I mean even just to bounce ideas off and to just share the whole journey because um, there's there's so much involved from choosing songs you know it would be great to hear from people have a community like that be like oh you know what would you like to hear next um, I, I see that you're I see that you're really good at that you're really good at engaging with with your fans I know you already have like a, a Facebook group which I'm a part of <laughs> I'm a fan and um so <laughs> I see that, that that you you know you really understand that concept but yeah so I have I have considered that um that platform and I, I'd like to start start that up soon yeah I, I completely know what you're saying if people aren't into it people aren't into it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well I'm I love the idea of you sharing that footage that people haven't haven't seen before. I mean, that sounds amazing. I'm already thinking, right, sign me up because I want to see that. That would be really interesting. <laughs> the um, doing it by thing is um, a really interesting concept mm. as well because um, when it comes to my YouTube channel, I try and put up um, mm. two pieces of content every week. So on Tuesday at six, we've got podcast. Um, wow. And then Friday at six, it's a different video, yeah. like a music video or something. Um, so I could do it potentially right. as a rolling monthly thing because I'm putting content out twice a week anyway. Um, but I know that Amanda Palmer, um, who's somebody I really admire, independent artist who had the first, I think it was million dollar mm. Kickstarter campaign. Like, wow. Um, yes. She does it per thing on her Patreon yeah, as well. Um, <laughs> and I was looking at her Patreon page and something there really struck a chord with me. She said, I can create without worrying about selling it. So I can just be creative mm. and create stuff that you love rather than spending the time worrying mm. about how I'm going to sell it and how I'm going to get that money back. And that is, that's something that really resonated with me because I feel like I've got barely any time at all to actually sing and to actually be creative because I'm constantly trying to grow the business so that I can somehow get mm income coming in even though i spent thousands of pounds making music and hundreds of pounds making youtube yeah. videos it's it's all consuming 
And so the idea that she's now got that freedom, that people have gifted her that freedom to be able to create without worrying about selling it, holy moly, that's just such an incredible gift because it gives her so much more time to just go, well, I'm just going to create stuff for you. you it's yours. I'm going to spend my time creating stuff yeah. for you rather than worrying about how she's yeah. going to sell it 24 seven. Like that really struck a chord with me. Yeah. And I thought what an amazing or find, gift. find her audience. Mm. Exactly. What an amazing gift her audience are giving her there. Um, and that really, mm. I thought that was amazing. And the idea that people want to give her that freedom to be able to do that because they love what she creates so much. That's just the biggest compliment ever, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So the idea yeah. of having a tribe that are telling you what they want and you and want to support you in that way and so that you can create things that you know they're going to enjoy. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean it just, you know, set you loose upon a canvas, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can just let's go <laughs> yeah absolutely so I kind of I'm battling it's the freedom the f freedom that comes with that yeah yeah absolutely it's the freedom that comes with that yeah it is because I've still got this internal battle of wow that sounds amazing but asking people for money is a bit weird but then if you're giving them something it's like buying a product surely yeah it's an it's like an exchange of value you hope you know here yeah Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it again now. You kind of inspired me a bit more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Look well, into this a bit more. Vice versa. <laughs> I'm kind of like I'm like I mean I'm not sitting on the on the fence, but I'm sort of like come on, Anna. Like yeah, let's be emboldened to to try this um, because you know the landscape of the music industry is changing, and and that's right. People want to consume music for free, yet it costs so much to create it um and i think that you know the artists and you know all the people that are part of my projects i they deserve to be paid for what they do you know i i, I recognize and i understand the amount of work that goes in um yeah. to and be good expertise. at your craft you know yeah. little all the business exactly so it's it's not like you know, I mean, I've, I've always been a person that I'm, I'm like the, I'll find a way, <laughs> you know, when something's, I mean, that's part of the reason why I found myself in Poland because um, of, I've, you know, finding a way to do something, finding a way to cre create something of beauty um, to share with the world. And, you know, I've got these grand, grandiose ideas of what I want to create. But, you know, um, the, the money that it costs to create that is, is not always feasible. So there is a lot of problem solving that goes on behind the scenes um, to find, you know, to find a way to make something um, and get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent is a challenge. It yeah. really is a challenge. I mean, especially when you've got a little and to support now as well. You've got to bear so many other things in mind. It's oh, not just I know. you that this affects now. It's this, the little and. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, he, yeah, he's my world. He is totally um, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, the pictures I, I, you put up. He's so cute. Yeah. I want to grab oh. his cheeks and. <laughs> <laughs> He is adorable. Do you think he's got musical bones I in his know. body? Oh, I think so. <laughs> uh, I mean, he he he's already he's a, he's a chatter. Um, he's so he's definitely a Hawkins. He is a chatter, <laughs> and he, he was talking quite young, like when he was fourteen or fifteen months. Um, wow. We stopped counting like the amount of words that he had and. And he's got a great memory, so he remembers songs, and he already has like he ha already has opinion about the songs that he likes and dislikes. I love so that. he'll, you know, I sing him a song at that time, and he'll be like, "Not that one, this one, not that one." Um, and at the moment, I've just like because we didn't let him have any TV, but I've introduced him to Sound of Music, and that's our special thing on a rainy, um, you know, Saturday or weekend. That's so um, cute. He's just like literally recently watched that and he is in love with the sound of music and obsessed with like Gretel and how she falls asleep on the stairs and so now every night I'm singing him like 
so long, farewell, you know, I've been to say, yeah, the song like again and again. That is <laughs> so, so yeah. cute. I do a performance every night, every night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow yeah. well he's so lucky yeah. to have you so, singing yeah, him I, I think to sleep he's... every night oh sorry i missed what you said then what did you say <laughs> oh no i just said i think he he's he's got that that um musical or or kind of ideas man he's very much ideas man <laughs> yeah well he yeah. is so adorable and I love the pictures that you share but thanks ever so much for coming on the podcast today it's been so wonderful to talk to you yeah. and um gosh I've just loved chatting to you about Ross and everybody I, yeah, it's just so great to relive those memories um because yeah Ross and Sandy and Pavel and Jeff Lawson um was working on Shine with me as well and I'm just so happy to relive those memories because oh, okay. they're some of my fondest ones them, but... Yeah, it's just amazing. So, um, and yeah, I'm really going to look into Patreon again, I think, as well, and have a look at that. So that would be really interesting. Um, I think really it'd be really nice if um, fans that are watching, if you wouldn't mind commenting below the video and letting us know your thoughts on a subscription thing or a Patreon idea of some kind. Like, it would be really, really useful for us to get <laughs> opinions, wouldn't it, though? It would be so, so helpful. So if you can comment below the video, letting us know your thoughts, that would be amazing. Be amazing. Um, and while you're here, you know what to do to like and subscribe to the channel, please. That would be really helpful. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Anna, for coming on the podcast. It's been so brilliant. Do Anna, it. I've loved chatting to you. So thank you thank so you much. I'll good. speak to you again soon. Please keep us yes, updated thanks. with your album, right? Yes, I will. <laughs> Perfect. I'll look forward to keeping updated with you and to chatting again. Cool. Thank you. Bye.